D-Lo, ay, yeah, clutch. I'm in the clutch, we in the clutch, it's even been clutch. You think that we suck, your dreams are the luck, your ship is just sunk, we turn off a way. Ooh, yeah, see that my face is up in disgust because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm just being honest, I'm keeping it a bug. Uh huh. We in the clutch! What's going on, clutch? Squat! What up, what up, what up? What up? It's Will Ross. And we are in the clutch. Hey. hey, back to ladies and gentlemen, another busy today, you feel me? Top three places you can't go and people <clears throat> who. Ah, oh, damn, I fucked that up. Top three places you can't go and people who went anyways. Anyways. <laughs> part yeah. two. Oops. If you're wondering why we checked out part two, <laughs> well, we checked out part one. But for whatever reason, I, I guess the file didn't uh, get recorded properly. So yeah. it is pretty much lost gone. in the sauce. It's lost in the sauce. And we're, we're not going to be one of those people. That let's re record a reaction and pretend and be fake about it. The, the <laughs> reaction like the first time. We can't do that. We just can't. So we're going to do part two, man. Shout now, out I will to say Mr. There is a There is a snake island on part one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just nuke it. Just, <laughs> yeah. know, just know I say it all. All you should do is just nuke it. This, that's it. But so we're gonna check out part two right now. Make sure you run up the like, subscribe. Let's nukes, see the places. Bro. We can, can't bro. nuke it, bro. We definitely can nuke it. No, it fucks what is up it doing? the whole nuking anything fucks up the whole world atmosphere. Okay, well, just have to, okay, let's That's, set it ablaze. It's gonna mess up shit too. What right. is it gonna mess up? Okay. What? The ecosystem. What is that island doing? Hey, go watch part one of Mr. Baller. <laughs> this edition. Top three places you can't go. Just the first one. You'll agree with me. Okay. I'm sure there are some people that will agree to nuke it. I'm just thinking about the planet, bro. All right. We don't have to nuke it. We could set it on fire. <laughs> Something. Right, it let's... ain't doing nothing for us, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Oh, I was, I skip forward. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's do that. I think we all like to believe that the whole world is accessible <laughs> to us. It's not. If we just had the time or the money nope. or maybe both. But in today's video, I'm going to shatter that illusion and share with you a top three <laughs> list that. of places you can't go, no matter how much money or time you might have. And for each of these locations, I'll share with you an instance of someone going there anyways wow, and what wish. happened to them. Spoiler, it didn't end well. But Most before time we get into today's top does. three list, if you're a fan Anytime of... Anytime if there's a place that says don't go or you what? shouldn't go. Oh, I don't know why would anyone want to go <laughs> to this. I'm good. I don't care if it's a joke. Let's go to the gates of hell. It's a place called the gates of hell. I don't, I don't give a fuck if this is a joke. Nigga, I'm not going. Why would I want to go there? <laughs> no. I'm trying to go nowhere near hell. I'm good, bro. I ain't even playing with that. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> I'm sure it's another place we need to, to nuke. Of course. In the early 1990s, a man turns on his camera, flips on his light, and starts filming. As the viewer, all we can tell is that he's in this gray <clears throat> hallway. It's very unclear where he uh -oh. is. It does appear to be something that might be underground because everything seems to be concrete. As he's filming, he begins walking down this narrow corridor where there's nothing on the walls or on the ground or anywhere to give away where he is. And so for the first 40 seconds of him just walking down this kind of meandering hallway, it's very uneventful. Then at some point, he aims his camera at what looks like an arrow that's been spray painted on the wall. Uh -oh. He looks down at the ground and there's another arrow. He starts to follow the arrows and he's filming say, each one as hell. he comes across them as he goes farther and farther off of the main hallway. Oh, sir. And at some point, the arrows bring him to this room, which at first you can't tell what it is. But then as the camera focuses, you see that there is this massive pile of human remains, skeletal remains. The guy filming does not seem alarmed by what he's seeing. In fact, it seems like he came here knowing he might come across this room full of human remains. After staring at this room for a few moments, he doesn't go in, but instead turns and continues following these arrows and strange markings on the wall and the ground as it brings him farther and farther down this other corridor to more rooms with more skeletal remains. I'm and at good. some point he comes to a full stop and he's looking at one of these rooms and something spooks him. It's unclear what it is because to this point, He's been very nonchalant about this horrible thing he's looking at. It didn't seem to phase him at all, but something did spook him because he's standing there and then all of a sudden he starts sprinting down the hall. <laughs> now it's clear that this is a video that he is alone down here, or at least he thinks he's alone down here. But he's running as if someone's chasing him. 
and he just takes off down the get you. The camera's now right. dropped to his side. He's not even trying to film what's in front of him. <laughs> oh, and you see this. And it's very panicked. Right. And at some point, he kind of trips and drops oh, his camera, and the camera comes to rest in this puddle, oh, looking right up against the wall. So you don't have a clear view of where this guy is or what's going on. And all you hear is his panicked breathing and his rapid footsteps as he continues to run down the hallway and eventually just disappears, and it's totally silent. And at some point, the camera runs out of batteries, and it turns off. Ten years later, a group of urban explorers would find this man's camera wow. where he had dropped it ten years earlier Whoa. in one of the scariest places on Earth. Hundreds of feet below the streets of Paris, France, uh, I one figured of the world's this is the Paris catacombs. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they, they made a, 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 a movie called, uh, ups, I think, Upside Down or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. where people go into Paris catacombs and people have believed that that's one of the entrances to um hell. to hell or whatnot because uh, you can get lost in there and you know i think many 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 years ago that's where they were buried like a lot of a lot of the people are buried under the city of paris or whatnot so yeah i, I knew it sounded familiar when she said bones on the floor and stuff like that and the entrance to gates to hell i was like this may be in paris and my mans went down there Ooh, and ain't finna figure it out uh yeah not your boy yeah i'm good on it <laughs> just mass graves it's known as the paris catacombs and it's about 200 miles of intricate passageways miles, that move bro. all over the city of this. paris where mm -hmm. over six million people have been buried the reason all these people were buried down there is because by the 17th century in paris the cemeteries in the city were overflowing and so the decision was made to move their bodies down underneath the streets of Paris into these tunnels. Oh, that the movie's called As Above, So Below. For That's mining, what but had not huh? The movie's called As Above, So Below. No. That's what it's called, yeah. I know not to watch that. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> used in hundreds of years. And so they began packing in all these people to the tune of six million bodies before mm -hmm. they ultimately stopped doing that. Starting in the late 1800s, the catacombs became sort of a popular tourist destination but only a tiny section of the catacombs yep. was made open to the public. Meaning there are literally hundreds of miles of passageways in the catacombs that are totally sealed off to the public. No one goes in there. Even though many people believe in these forbidden sections of the catacombs, there are entrances to additional levels of the catacombs, mm -hmm. that there could be as much as 400 miles of Ooh. passageways in the catacombs just waiting to be explored. I'm good. But no one's allowed to go in there. At least not legally. There's an yeah. entire community of people that are sneaking into the forbidden section wow. of the catacombs by going through sewer drains and getting onto train tracks and sneaking into these little cracks in the side of the walls. I mean, it's incredibly dangerous. It involves wriggling your way into these 13th century tunnels that are unmapped, pitch black, and no one knows you're there. Not to mention, you're surrounded by literally millions of dead people. <laughs> Once people started figuring out how to sneak into the forbidden section of the catacombs, there's been countless stories of these urban explorers sneaking in, getting lost, and there never coming go. out again. Which is exactly what we think happened to the guy with the camera who saw the arrows and then ran away. His camera was located miles and miles into one of those forbidden sections. Yep, I'm good on it. Good on it, bro. I'm straight, bro. In 2014, Kenny Veach was an avid long distance hiker that spent lots of his time hiking around the Mojave Desert in search of caves and abandoned mine shafts to go check out. Sometimes he'd bring his girlfriend with him, but most of the time he was on his own and he would stay out for a couple of days at a time. Kenny was constantly on YouTube watching hiking videos and anything to do with the Mojave Desert. And Kenny was a regular commenter on all of those types of videos. In June of 2014, Kenny must have watched this video called Son of an Area 51 Technician because he had left this comment where he was telling the community that had watched this video that he had had a very strange thing happen to him when he was out hiking near Area 51. For those that don't know what Area 51 is, it's a highly confidential United yep. States Air Force yep. installation that is frequently looped into it's like alien five warning signs. Kenny goes on to describe this strange event, and he said he found this cave entrance on the side of this mountain that was shaped like an uppercase M. As Kenny walks up to enter this M-shaped cave, he said his body started to vibrate and it stopped uh -oh. him in his tracks. And he said he didn't know what it was, but as he walked closer and closer, his body just continued to vibrate to the point where he said he just had to turn around and leave. That he mm. knew something was wrong with this cave and he could not go inside. 
And so he said he turned around and he left. His comment got a lot of traction on this video and a lot of people jumped on and were like, well, I don't really believe you, one, yeah, but right. if that is true, you gotta go back. You gotta go back there and explore it. You gotta document this. Of course, Whatever this always, is, we wanna know bro, what it is. If there's, taking... bro, got... <laughs> if there's something, people got, if there's something by a, a, a facility that people don't want you by, and there's a little cave in the area, and you start walking, you start vibrating like a goddamn phone. There's obviously <laughs> something there that's, that doesn't want you there. Right. I'm I ain't, good, I ain't bro. Gonna test dummy. I'm good, dog. Them, oh, no, you gotta go back. If I'm vibrating like a damn phone, I'm good, bro. I, I bet you, you none of them went. They sitting there telling him to go. Nah, bro. Y- y'all go. I'll give you the coordinates. Here, right. go. Here Let are. me know how it works out. I'm, <laughs> I'm, <straight>. coming, you <laughs> I'm good, dog. Him on to go back and hey, check he out. probably Kenny did. responded to his critics and said, "I'm telling <clears> you the truth. I know what I saw." This cave was different. I go out in the desert all the time looking for caves and I go in them. That's what I do. <laughs> this one was different and that's why I didn't go in it. But people just kept egging him on no. to go back and check it out. Go to back. Film it, show documentation of this thing. And so finally he agreed. A couple of months I later, Kenny goes on. back out to the Mojave Desert with his camera and he films himself looking for the M cave, but he can't find it. So the video is kind of a bust. He still uploads it to YouTube and he tells everyone that he's gonna go back out again. He knows where it is. He's fairly confident that he can get to it again, but he just needs to go out a third time to go look for it. Over the course of the next month in the comment section of that video, people are encouraging Kenny. And you got it, bro. To find it. We're so excited. Of course. One commenter was not so encouraging. Their name was Lemmy Kilmeister and they wrote on his video, do not go to M cave. If you go in, you won't be able to get out again. Kenny wrote back, what do you mean? And Lemmy Kilmeister didn't respond and subsequently vanished from YouTube. Kenny brushes this off and on November- Oh, oh. Do not go to the M cave. If you do, you won't get out. What do you mean by that? That's it. Account don't exist no more. No. <laughs> hey, bro. They watching you, dog. Bro. If a nigga say- He got the warning though. Do not go back, bro. If you do, you won't get out. I'm just telling what you this now. What do you now. mean by that account doesn't exist? <laughs> I'm telling you, Oh, that's bro. it. That's, that's, first of all, I wouldn't even been in a position to begin with. Yeah. Let's just, you know, start with that. But also, all, all I got to see is that. Yeah, bro. I'm done. I, they all right. be listening to you, man. <laughs> they be listening to you on your phones. They, they oh, yeah. be watching, bro. And they be they watching. Getting, if they getting some bugs about, you know, I mean, they be watching these people all the time mm-hmm. because these are the ones that's so enthusiastic. You know, they, they're yeah. like enthusiasts of certain things like when it comes to Area 51 and caves. So they got a radar on people like that already in case they get too close to information. Especially if he was in the general area of exactly. it. Exactly. They know who's over there, who's what they doing. You know, if they get too close, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? He probably went to the cave. They fucking <laughs> vibrated this nigga. Told right. the nigga to get the fuck up out of here. Hey, thinking, send, him a, send him a warning shot. Yeah, send him a warning shockwave. <laughs> Which is, I mean, because they let him make it. Yeah, they let him make it. He came, he the one keep coming. I don't even want to keep talking about it. I can 10, only guess how this ends. He heads back out once again to try to find M. Yeah, he on November to the 14th, when he had not returned and his girlfriend had not heard from him and couldn't get in touch with him, she called the police. How do we police know? launched this massive search for Kenny. They knew roughly where he was going to Bet be you because did. he had documented it so aggressively on his YouTube channel. And so they search in that area. And after about a week, they find his cell phone and it was laying outside of an abandoned mine shaft. Now, immediately, searchers think, well, he must have fallen into this mine shaft that was almost a vertical mine shaft. He must have fallen in there to his death. So they get a camera and they feed it down into this mine shaft, and there's no one in there. And very clearly, no one had been down this mine shaft in a very long time. Certainly not Kenny. There were no tracks around where his phone was located, so no animal tracks or people <sighs> tracks. They and got the phone him. didn't have yep, blood yep, on yep. it or scratches sure on it. It was just sitting there with no new information. They got him. Beyond the cell phone, they had nothing else to go on, and eventually the search was terminated. Yep. Kenny never turned up. He was just gone after that. While it's pretty easy for people to chalk up this whole M cave thing as total nonsense and that they believe all that happened is Kenny went out into the wilderness of the Mojave Desert and ultimately got lost and died, and that's fair. I do want to offer up one thing about his description of being near the cave that first time he saw it. 
He described his body vibrating to the point where he couldn't go any further and he had to turn around and leave. The United States military uses these things mm -hmm. called access denial systems yep. around their highly classified installations. Uh -huh. Anywhere where you cannot risk someone getting in, like a fence isn't good enough, they use these machines that yep. fire beams at people that get too close. They're yeah. non-lethal, but it's like being thrust inside of a microwave. You feel hot and really uncomfortable and you turn around and you get the heck out of there. The fact that Kenny was right near Area 51, right. a highly confidential area, regardless of alien conspiracies, it's a known highly confidential base. And he's discovering this strange cave entrance that doesn't look like other cave entrances. And he's walking up to it, describing basically what it feels like to be hit with an access denial system. It makes you wonder, did he discover some secret entrance to some secret base? Or is this a bunch of crap and he just got lost in the desert and died? We don't know. I'm going what with the latter. What we don't know is that the <sighs> search for M Cave probably ended his life. And yep. that's why you should never go looking for M Cave. Or, or just, just listen to my guy that said, hey, you go back go. there. You're not coming, coming back. back. And guess what? He didn't come back. RP Kitty. Whatever that's... happened. He probably worked there now. You never know. <laughs> oh my God, bro. <clears throat> As the sun began to set on August 18th, 2010, Ben McDaniel, who was 30 <clears> years old, walked to the end of the pier, put on all of his diving equipment, and okay. jumped in the water. He slowly descended 115 feet and came to a stop right in front of a very famous underwater sign. The sign very clearly tells anybody who sees it, do not go any farther unless you are absolutely certain. What's up with the whole Grim Reaper deal? <laughs> Prevent your death, go no further. More than 300 divers, including open water scuba instructors, have died in caves just like this one. You needed training to dive. You need cave training and cave equipment and <laughs> to cave dive. Without cave training and cave equipment, divers can die here. It can happen to you. Nothing well, in this cave is worth dying for. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Hey, that's all All I got to see is that. All right. All right, bro. Yo, <laughs> My adventure is it's, over. It's the picture. <laughs> I'll stop just on the picture. <laughs> oh, shit. Nothing here. Stop. Prevent your death. Go no further. All right. All right. <laughs> Let me get back. This is the right thing for you to be doing. <laughs> if you go farther, you're probably going to die like the 300 other people yep. that have died doing this particular activity. He swam right past that sign and went 300 feet to the very famous underwater locked Sounds gate. About right. Now, the only people that have keys to this are extremely experienced divers, and even they don't typically go into this area because it's so dangerous. Ben was not one of the very experienced divers that was given a key, but he still desperately wanted to get to the other side of the gate. So he's sitting there yanking on the gate and he's getting himself kind of pushed inside halfway through the gate and he can't quite get it open. And another diver saw him doing this and was actually concerned that Ben was going to get trapped on the gate itself and would just drown on the gate. And so this diver comes over and uses his key and maybe against his better judgment opened it thinking that that was better than him getting stuck on the gate. Ben turns to look at him, gives him a nod, thank you, and he, on his own, swims into one of, if not the single most dangerous underwater caves in the whole world. It's called Vortex Spring Cave. From the locked gate, this cave extends another 1,600 feet and goes down to a depth of 310 feet. Damn. The majority of this section of the cave Damn. is mapped, but there are sections that are not fully explored because they're so narrow where you have to literally take off your gear, wriggle through a hole, pull your gear through and put it back on. Oh, All no. the while, you're barely holding onto your mouthpiece. And so really the full extent of this section of the oh, cave good. is not known. While we don't know exactly what Ben did when he went through that gate and I'll entered into this to extremely dangerous <laughs> cave, we do know that he didn't come out again. And yep. after a couple of days and no one had seen him, they launched this massive search for him. Search and for they what? combed as much as they could of inside of that cave, but there were sections that they were just not prepared to go search. And so he was never recovered. Yep. All they ever found were two of Ben's dive bottles. As a total side note, when I was reading about the Vortex Spring Cave, it reminded me of some of the things that we did when I was in the Navy SEAL teams. And one of my least favorite things oh, to do wow. is flex. That nigga tactical I knew trained. I was shipping. The SEAL team? That's hey. fucking awesome, Mr. Balling. Yeah. Damn, I did not know that. Yeah. 
Well, hey, shit. Don't mess with Mr. Baller. <laughs> <laughs> he is ready. <laughs> balling. Is when we would be swimming in and around ships. We would, we would go under barges. And so a barge has a flat bottom. And sometimes they sit really close to the bottom of the ocean, but there's a little space under there where you can maneuver. And so we would go underneath these barges where there was only a few feet of clearance and it's totally pitch black and you're swimming in just total blackness where you're so claustrophobic. You're basically tight in this little space where you're just hoping that nothing causes this barge to sink on me. And by the time you get out the other side, it's like this huge sense of relief. And so that's why this is number one on my list, because for me, the idea of being trapped in a little tiny alcove inside of an yeah. underwater cave where you can't get out, you're running out of air, it's pitch black. I mean, that is just the absolute worst way to go. Yeah. That's going to do it, guys. Let me know in well, the comments. Well, the sign needs to be changed to 301 people have died down here. Yeah, don't facts. fucking go down here, bro. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I mean, bro... <laughs> What what what? Did, what it's like? What else? Like, what else? It's like you wanted to meet your maker. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everybody in this story, well, except the one dude that went to hell. <laughs> he he ain't want to meet his too. maker. Yeah. Well, yeah. That nigga started running. Maker. Yeah. Just, oh, all you see is just he's not even recording no more. He's just uh, damn the camera. But you went there. Oh. I guess you found you wanted to go to hell. The sign said, "Hey, this is." Go to hell. He looking at the sign. Okay. All right. Go left. Stepping okay. on people's bones and stuff. All right, man. Go left. <laughs> he saw something that <laughs> spooked his ass. Yeah. Oh! Ah! That thing said, come here. This come nigga here, boy. The camera. His only source of light. And just said, yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. And the never, nigga got vibrated. Never recovered and, again. And then came back. Nigga on the YouTube section. He came back a couple times. Nigga on the YouTube section. Hey, bro, do not come back here again. Or oh, it's it's a, it's a done deal for you, bro. Look, it came back and never was seen again. I don't get it, bro. Nigga. What else you got? Hey, three hundred of these niggas died, and they're professionally trained divers. Don't go down there. Nah, I got I got it. It's just nerve. Goes down there, never seen again. Three hundred and one divers. I'm gonna be the one to survive. Bro, I can't. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm not laughing at their situation because obviously the situation is messed up. Of course. But at the same time, it's like, bro, it's it's we're like adults. we're adults, bro. Uh, it don't take me much. I'm 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 real simple. Hey, don't go that way. All right, cool. But somebody tell me on YouTube, even if they trolling, don't go back over there. Say say less, my brother. I don't even know who you are. Bro, I'll you pin the comment. Something. I'll pin it. So for everybody that keep telling me to go, nah, this nigga well, said my don't. My boss said don't. He said don't even do it. <laughs> and if I see a sign that says don't go down there, other people have died like you. All right, bro. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm going back to the surface, maybe get something to drink. Like, the fuck? <laughs> the moral of the story is we all have decisions. And our decisions are, can be lead to good things. And our decisions can lead to bad things. Yeah. So make sure you make the right choice when they're presented to you. There's consequences for those decisions. Man. Oh, my It doesn't God. matter what you think you're trying to do. There's consequences for it. Jesus, you know? that's just a trash. Whether you make it or not. Trash way to But now, if y'all enjoyed the video, man, you already know what to do. Make sure you want to like, subscribe. Let us know if y'all want us to check out part three. These are interesting. These, uh, these definitely are definitely want to catch up. Yeah. Catch some more of these, man. For uh, sure, for sure. So let us know in the comment section. Keep on showing love, spreading love, be in love as well. Catch on the next video. Peace out. Already. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me.